get beauty shots for like five minutes. 118th playing of the United States Amateur. We're on the 10th at Pebble Beach, one of the all-time iconic courses in the world. Ned Michaels alongside Ewan Porter, a two-time winner on the web.com tour. We're going to be following the match of Cole Hammer from the state of California. Ewan to have qualified for the field. There were 312 players when we started. Wrote it down to 64 with a 24-man playoff for one spot. It was early in the morning, started on 17, went to 18. Bergeron earned that spot, but then was dusted off. But it's been a pretty good battle so far for this hammer match. Cole threw the first nine holes as two up. He birdied five, six, and seven. That's not a bad little stretch at Pebble Beach. I tell you what, the fifth hole to make a birdie there is exceptional, especially where the hole location is there today, tucked over that bunker on the right hand side but look at this for a view Ned and a new team ground here on number 10 that's right we were out early this morning weren't we testing this out at at 373 but it doesn't play quite that long because it's downwind you're taking on if you do decide to try to drive the green a direct line you still though you would have to get it a good 300 yards in the air to clear the barranca clear the sand really the ideal play though Hang it down the left side with a little sliding fade. Absolutely. To get it on the green, you have to enter through the front left portion. And this fairway slopes severely left to right. So if you do take a driver and you hit it between the middle and the right-hand side of the fairway, that ball has every conceivable chance of kicking into the hazard, the hazard being the ocean. Well, and you can play it off the beach if you find it. But the problem with playing it off the beach, if you just barely miss it, that sand is as thick as snow. It's like trying to blast out of a four inch drift. Of course, if you splay it way to the right, sand a little more compact and you have a shot. Well, what, what, what do you think the play is? Do you, do you try and get it as close to the ocean as possible, maybe 60, 70 yards <laughs> right of the green where the sand is firm? That's absolutely the play. <laughs> but we've seen all kinds of clubs already. Been out here for a little while now watching groups make this decision and one of the things about this ultimate test, this USGA Amateur Championship, is they love to move the teeing grounds and hole locations in different locations so that you can have holes that are 150 yards difference because normally the tenth is way back. Well, it's 495 yards from the back tee. And you're exactly right in what you just said. I, I specifically recall the 2008 US Open at Torrey Pines. The 14th hole there is 415 or 420 yards from memory, may even be a little bit longer, but they played it third round at 265 yards, really tempting the players to go for the green because the green is perched there right on top of the cliff. Cole Hammer at two up, he's, he's not taking any chances and he's going to rely, rely on his trusty wedge game to make that birdie. Well, this is absolutely the right play for Hammer, and, it, and you ask, you know, what's the right play? It's completely situational. Depends on how you're hitting the driver. But if you're two up, it's get it in the fairway. Put the pressure squarely on your opponent to have to pull the driver and hit a miraculous shot. Beautiful shot there down the left half of the fairway. We can't quite see that ball land, and there's no doubt that will kick down to the right a little bit, a little fist bump to his caddy there. Now, 21-year-old Joshua McCarthy. Are you surprised he's taking the iron at two down? Well, he's a lefty. He likes to play that high draw and maybe concerned that the hazard sneaks out a little too close to the green. Yeah, that's it's leaking oil out to the left, though. It's coming back. I think that one's going to be fine. It'll kick to the right, down the fairway. Yesterday, McCarthy took care of Dan Erickson, three and two. And it was Cole Hammer, though, Ewan, who escaped on the last hole, pitched in for an improbable eagle, and was able to win his match two up over Alvaro Ortiz. Well, he tied as low medalist, Cole Amateur. He, was, he shot 137 through two rounds. 136. 136? 37. 137, I was right. That's 
pretty exceptional scoring. Six under par at Pebble Beach and by Glass Hill. Don't forget, Cole Hammer made a name for himself three years ago when he qualified as a 15-year-old dad for the U.S. Open Championship at Chambers Bay. It was interesting yesterday, too, Ewan. We saw the number one, two, and three players in the World Amateur Rankings leave after the first round. Well, it's the beauty of match play, isn't it? Anything can happen. And really, it can sometimes be a little misleading. The first seed, the 64th seed. I can tell you, every single one of those players is very, very talented. And if you are 64th seed, you're still theoretically in the, in the top fifth of the field that started. 312 players entered this championship. So 18 holes, it's a sprint, not a marathon. So really, we shouldn't be too surprised at the results. It just makes it very difficult to pick a favorite. Well, think about it, as you mentioned, it was the number one seed who tied at 137 with Cole Hammer. Daniel Hillier, who you know, lost to Jacob Bergeron, or who was down early, excuse me, to Jacob Bergeron, and then he came back dramatically at the end of the round. And so you just, one in 64, they're just numbers. You're in, you're in the match play. So you have to keep your head about you, especially here as you make the turn. This is the farthest point out from the clubhouse here at Pebble Beach. I like this play, the iron off the tee, and I know you're probably as surprised as anyone about that because I tend to hit driver everywhere, but look at where they are. It's a very straightforward wedge shot from here. This green tilts just ever so slightly from left to right. The ball just slightly below the feet. Suits the little fade. Well, yesterday, as I mentioned with Hillier, Cole Hammer got down early. He was two down but he played his last six holes in four under par. Well, this hole location in the middle right portion of the green coal hammer has 128 yards downwind. So you've got to think it'll be a full sandwich. Playing downwind, Ned, you've got to play something full to create the spin, don't you think? Swing hard, get it high, that's right. You've got to... Just skip it over the front edge of the screen. The whole location is actually pretty accessible today. If you want to hit driver, you, know, you can miss it pretty far to the left, and then you're pitching back into the breeze. Even though the green slopes towards the ocean, it's not a bad play if you want to be aggressive. Hammer's one cool customer. Wouldn't want to have a shootout with him, Texas Longhorn soon to be. And what, this, what a summer he has had, Ned. Mm won the Western Amateur just a few weeks ago, shot 23 under par. Incredible scoring. Now McCarthy plays his golf at Pepperdine. He's 21, he'll graduate in a couple of years' time if he stays. Has played in USGA championships before a couple of times in 16 and 17 this, the United States amateur. Did not make it to match play. I like his ball above his feet for a lefty unit. He can hit that sling and draw, hold it up against the wind. He can do whatever he wants light-wise. Harder shot, I think, for Cole. seen that massive bounce. This is when you have to draw in your mind like Bubba Watson. Low driving skipping draw that lands on the front of the green spins hard to the right towards the cup. It's the only thing he does left-handed is play golf with this man. Everything else is righty. I like 
the way he just gets on with his business too. This is a good looking shot, maybe six feet left of the hole. Oh, beautiful shot from McCarthy. So a good opportunity for him to perhaps peg one back from Cole Hammer. McCarthy teammates with Sahith Pagala and Pepperdine, who made the quarterfinals of this championship back in 2016. Also played in the US Open Championship last year at Aaron Hills. Some good players have come out of Pepperdine, Ned. What they a wonderful have. place to, to play golf there. Jason Gore. What a year he had. A couple of good years there, but that one especially of you and where he won three times on the web, came out, won the 84 Lumber Classic. 2005, also shot a 59 in Omaha. That Speaking year. of 59s, earlier today, Vanderbilt Commodore Grant Snedeker posted a 59 at the Wyndham Championship. He made a 24-footer on the last hole for birdie to break the barrier of 60. But what was interesting, he bogeyed the first hole of the day. Well, we've seen a couple of players in years gone by make bogey on their final hole to shoot a 59. Kevin Sutherland up in New York on the Champions Tour, and then Doug Dunicky many years ago on the Nike Tour, which is now the Web.com Tour. Three putted from 10 feet on the final hole to shoot a 59. By the way, do you know Brand Snedek or did you go to Vanderbilt? I'm not, I'm not sure. <laughs> I am shamelessly in plugging the Vanderbilt Commodores. Yes, I went there, but it's a big day for Vanderbilt. Snedeker with the 59, and there are three Commodores in this field of match play of 32, and one commit. So Scott Limbaugh and Gator Todd, they're doing something right. And he's pretty much shunning us from the program. <laughs> well, let's talk about Cole Hammer's putt. 35 feet that I was speculating could be a little closer to 40. Now, he's putting back into a breeze that's stiffening, and it's certainly very exposed out here. He's caddies trying to get a good look at the line by standing over the ball. I actually, when I was playing Ned, I used to like reading the, reading the putt over the ball. You see players reading it from all sides of the hole, pulling out the green books. I still think a lot of natural instinct should come into it, and I feel like over the ball is one of the best places to be able to read the putt. Thinking. Because some, very no, and it hurts. That's, I've actually got to go lay down. The, the, the only thing I don't love about that is you feel it with your feet, and sometimes that can fool you. If the, 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 in this case, the ball may be below his feet, but it works from right to left early. I always like to read from both sides, though, and he has certainly taken the time to study this. Is that why you were on the clock all the time? Yes, that's exactly why. Heinously slow. And I think you play better when you're fast, when you move quickly and more athletic. Okay, so this will go left early and then the rest of the way, it will start to move away from the ocean, from his left to right. And you'll note that Cole Hammer adopts the claw style grip. Here it comes. Oh, that's gonna sit down, put on the brakes. And I'll tell you what, out of any golf course on the planet, I gotta think four and five footers around Pebble Beach are probably some of the hardest to hold anywhere. Just so tricky and these breaks were so subtle. How much does the wind affect this part of McCarthy? I mean, it won't right now. There's a maybe a club of breeze, but this is straight back up the hill. If anything, it tries to work to the right. right hard when it hit the hole so this for the half reminder that hammer is two up on the 10th at Pebble Beach he talked about going to the claw it wasn't because he was putting poorly he said he just was experimenting with it one day and it felt really good and he made a few more putts so that's that Now, interesting that you just mentioned the claw grip and the fact that he wasn't putting poorly. Tommy Fleetwood, who we've seen a lot on the international golf scene over the past 12 to 18 months, 
He uses the claw grip, almost like the old Mark Kalkovecchia pencil grip. Well, he reverted to it purely through science. He started seeing his putting coach, Phil Kenyon, and Phil Kenyon, he retrieved all the data of Tommy Fleetwood's putting stroke and decided that because of his, the way he putted and because of how strong his right hand was, he would be better off using the claw grip net to putt, having never ever tried it before. And since then, he's taken the golfing world by storm. It's a new part of the game, using data, using information, using statistics to improve your performance. Which I like because you don't really have to change anything. Yeah, he changed his grip, but a lot of it's course management decision making. Instead of, well, I need to learn how to hit a new shot or I need to change my grip, it's, no, I mean, look at Dustin Johnson. It was just a matter of, you need to go practice your wedges. He didn't change anything except for how he was preparing. Tell me a little about the 11th, Ned. 390 yards up the hill and a blind tee shot with the wind off the left. What else can you tell me? It's a terrific hole because it's one you can make birdie, but if you lose your senses, if you lose focus for just a minute, the rough on the, the right side, some of the deepest gunch out here. And that's where the wind and everything visually wants to push you. through the ball, but this one, he's lost it right on the wind, as you were saying. Well, landed on the edge of the fairway, but that's going to be in the right rough and a, and a much trickier angle for his approach. Yep, and that's exactly what it is. You know, your house up in the distance, Ewan. Thank you for letting me stay there, by the way. No, you're very welcome. That's, I'm very proud of that. The right edge of the fairway is the chimney on the left, the guest quarters. Anything right of that's in the rough. You have much more room to the left than you would think. Love the way McCarthy plays quickly. Oh. That too, that's hitting further that's right. That's got to get down. Ball. That's got heat on it. Needs to get down. Big bounce. Well, that's what you don't want to do after you're, especially when you're, tra you're trailing, when your opponent puts it in trouble, and then you follow him in there. McCarthy back on the teeing ground still, making a couple extra practice swings, trying to figure out what happened. You know, Jim Furyk does that. When he hits a bad shot, you watch him make a few practice swings. What he's doing is he's trying to recreate the swing that he should have made that feels good, and he won't leave until he makes the perfect golf swing that visually, uh, that's the shot I wanted to hit. If I had up in that theory, I'd still be there. <laughs> Almost 8,000 competitors tried to qualify for this event. You know, it dates all the way back. To 1895 along with the US Open and the women's amateur the three oldest championships for the United States Golf Association. Ned I know you know this but back in 1895 in that first amateur US amateur championship the largest margin of victory ever in a final that year Charles McDonald victorious 12 and 11 but the last time they played the US amateur championship here at Pebble Beach David Gossett defeated Sung Yoon Kim in the final, nine and eight. David Gossett, of course, went on to win the John Deere Classic on the PGA Tour. So we know David's watching, a big fan of the USGA. Hello to David. And remember, you can interact with us watching this on Facebook Live. Come and say hello. For another 25 minutes of coverage. One of, the, one of the things that this golf course you don't necessarily get on television is the elevation change. I mean, I can hear you breathing deeply. Not an athlete anymore. <laughs> but it does from the clubhouse. It slowly works its way up towards Carmel. And even this 11th, it's gradual, but it'll get you. Legs a little weary. And that's something that the players really have to take into consideration when they when they hit their shots around here because with the severe elevation change and the fact that the ball at sea level doesn't travel anywhere near as far, it certainly takes quite a bit of getting used to. So if you're coming out here for the first time playing, it's no 
easy task to be able to gauge the distance and play well. Had a couple of, of my students, former students even, playing this week, and they said, how should I prepare? So that's one of the things you had to do. Come out in the morning, take your nine iron, your stock nine iron that goes 155, 160 yards, and know exactly how far it goes in the morning. Because in a cool Carmel morning, that club is probably almost a full club short. And by the afternoon when it warms up, it's back to normal. Josh McCarthy, he'll be first to play. He has 136 yards at that back right hole location, going uphill with the wind coming off the left and just hurting ever so slightly. But you've got to be careful of the flyer here. Now, do you play for that? Do you aim a little bit left and allow for the ball to fly and perhaps release a little bit? Well, this rock is interesting because it, it, it doesn't look all that deep, but it can wrap its talons around the ball pretty quickly, and you think you're going to get that jumper. And it comes off like a wet sponge and gets about halfway to the hole. And this green, kidney shape, and always one of the most firm. The highest point on the property. This wind just whips through this area, dries out the green. One thing you cannot do here is get above the hole. Just a pitching wedge. Just right of get the up. flag. It's Lovely. there. I don't see any. However. Now, Cole Hammer has a terrific looking lie. You can see all of the ball. Ball below his feet. You need a similar shot to what he just hit on the last hole, so he should have this gauged and dialed in pretty tight. Exactly. And he has 125. Also got a pitching wedge. Good contact. Much lower, but it's hitting a little right. Uh, looks like he may have found the putting surface, though, Ned. Well, the first time we saw Cole Hammer really step out was at the 2015 United States Open out of Chambers Bay. Qualified as just a teenager, Ewan. Think about how old, 15 years old. What were you doing? Were you qualifying for major championships? I qualified for the junior championship at my home club, and I was pretty pleased with that. But don't forget that Cole Hammer, he wasn't the youngest to qualify for the US Open Championship back in 2012, Ned, at the Olympic Club, not too far from here. 14-year-old Andy Zhang, who makes his home in Florida now. That was the year Bo Hostler. Low amateur as a 17-year-old with braces. That's right, coming out on Saturday. Tied for 29th there, Bo Hostler. Had his mum behind the green. Was close to the lead on that third round. Cool hammer, though, it has been a terrific summer. You referenced this win 10 days ago, 12 days ago at the Western Amateur. Earlier in the summer, he won with Garrett Barber, the four ball, and I got a chance to call that. The ham and egged it pretty well. They didn't necessarily play the best golf, but even when the pressure was highest, when he needed a shot, hammer always delivered. I like this McCarthy swing. It reminds me of Brian Harmon. Quick wrist set, vertical, moves efficiently. No doubt in his mind what he's doing. I'm just thinking when Cole Hammer misses the cut. What's the headline? Is it an MC Hammer? I <laughs> just not. I have nothing for that. Oh, Is that a dad joke? What about this shot? Downhill, out of thick rough, and this is very quick. However, the wind against him may be a saving grace net. But remember, this is such a firm green. So fast. It looks like quite a bit of break from his right to left. He's looking out there right at the hole. Would you take your glove off for this shot? I would, absolutely. Look, he's almost perpendicular to the hole. He's going to try to land it about two and a half feet on the green and just let it, like a NASCAR, turn hard left. Go over the club 
devices. Wow. It's not done. Oh, this is one of the best chips I have ever seen. That is absolutely marvelous. The guts that it takes to take that bigger swing from just off the green, barely get the ball on a putting surface and let gravity do the rest, that is seriously impressive. Now McCarthy has a chance to go clawing back and get this match just one down. See, Heath Tagala, you just mentioned his teammate, he's out watching. Rooting his buddy on. The good news is he would have learned how fast this can be. He would have just seen coals trickling down. So this is one you just kind of whisper to it, say, get, get moving, but make sure you stop at the cross section. It needs to slow down. It needs to slow down. It's a good indication of how spectacular of a chip Cole Hammer just hit. Gosh, you almost need chewing gum on the putter face, stopping it down there. And I could be wrong, but I believe that the green keepers actually have this green rolling even a little bit slower than the others on the stint meter due to the severity of the green complex net. Well, we try to average all of them out at the same speed, so they might treat them a little bit differently. Well, he would have seen what this does. Beautiful comeback putt from McCarthy. And nice to hear Cole Hammer say good putt there. I like the good sportsmanship. And it would have been easy for Cole to walk off to the next tee. We've seen that a couple of times, but I like that. You're right, he stays there, just waits for his opponent. Wasn't easy, but McCarthy gets it down. They have, with fours and Ewan, still two up. Coming to the top 12. This is one of the best holes on the golf course, and one of the most demanding as well. I just want to have a quick little chat about match play tactics. I know growing up, I was always taught to perhaps use, use some different tactics to perhaps get on the mind of the other players. However, I've, I've also been of the belief that you don't need that man. There's, I think the best player will win at the end of the day. I, just, I don't think it helps when it comes to friendships or relationships. You're not doing yourself any favors if you try to pull any swift little maneuvers or tactics on your opponent. I know it can help, and generations before us certainly utilize those uh, fairly efficiently. talked about in his press conferences that, and even back to the football how important the par threes were to him in match play unit. What do you think? Were there holes that were more important than others? Theoretically they shouldn't be. All they seem to be important as one another. However, there's no question that you, you tend to place emphasis on particular holes that perhaps don't suit your eye a little bit more than others. But when you think about par threes, I don't care where you're playing, if you play the par threes and even par as a professional or at the highest level, you're generally going to set yourself up for a pretty good round because statistically they're the toughest holes, aren't they? And they always, in the USGA, seem to somehow figure out an awkward yardage for you. So, for example, this is 205 yards. That wouldn't fit anybody's game. And such a skinny green as well here in number 12, and it runs away from you from front to back, so it's very difficult to keep the ball on the putting surface. However, today into the breeze, the ball will tend to float up a little bit, so it might become a little bit of an easier task. you just have to sit and absorb where you are in life. Especially on a crystal clear, gorgeous day. Not a 
single cotton ball in the sky. It's just blue as far as you can see. Not only in the sky, but out to the Pacific. A little bit of a hold up here on the 12th, late for the group in front of us. Watching the 2000 U.S. Open here, Ned and I believe it was the I believe it was the third round when they came to this hole before they had to stop play because of darkness. And Tiger Woods hold that 40 footer for birdie that really just put an exclamation point on what he was doing in that championship. And it's funny how when you walk around golf courses with such rich history like Pebble Beach, you walk the fairways and you can remember what certain players have done at, at points in history. The seventh hole, for example, it's hard not to think of Tom Kite's chip in on that short par three down the hill. I know we just walked nine and ten, and for me anyway, I think of Gil Morgan in the 92, that same 92 US Open, having a nine shot lead to play through the third round before capitulating. Well, as we have a moment here, let's just update you on some of the other scores. Riley and Hillier. Riley, five and four. Overstreet and Parvis, it was three and two. Overstreet's way. Noah Goodwin is one up through 15 holes. Now, Hammer coming to the plate. This is Four iron. So it's a very high ball flight considering it's into the wind, but it's strong as well. Nope. Front bunker, perhaps just a little bit too high mid for the breeze. And you know, do you, do you think that's something that the younger players perhaps they don't they're a little too one-dimensional at this at this point. It sounded like he got a little high on the face and it just got puffed up by the breeze and held up. McCarthy, this is a five iron and flighted a little bit better, working out towards the right side of the green, just trying to catch a piece. Well, that's been well short. See, I, I just that's to me, Ned, that's the difference between the, the very top echelon professional golf and amateur golf. These players are all such exceptional players, but there's no question watching the professionals here. They would have flighted that ball down a lot lower and been able to control it in the breeze. Well, I think, too, something to consider is that you feel that right here. We're tucked away back on the 12th tee, and you can't feel the breeze quite as much as you can when you're exposed halfway down. So you're making decisions with inaccurate information in some capacity. Cole Hammer, Texan, he'll, he's used to the wind, but he's not used to this wind, the ocean breeze. Now, he's certainly a champion. He's played all over the place. He will understand it, but it, it's like putting on Bermuda greens. The more you do it, the more you know how to navigate through it and around it. And a couple of shots we've seen with him, distance control has just been a little bit of an issue. McCarthy, though, a California kid. Surprising and but fortunate, Ewan, that he is going to be able to putt his ball. Well, you never want to miss a green on a par three, but if you do miss this green, he has left it in the perfect position. Plenty of green to work with now. Bear in mind, Cole Hammer is a sensational bunker player, and he has a perfect lie in the bunker. Let's go. Scores to update us on real quick. Ewan... Bling is two up on Bond through 14. Celinda, five and four over Phillips. Stuart Hagestad has Chatfield three down through 13. Will Gordon finished fourth in the stroke play. Is two up on by. Mouth, two up on Phillips. Excuse me, two down on Phillips. Murray, three up as well. 
Well, we have an interesting scenario here. Coalhammer is not first to play. We cannot find his opponent. I saw him ducking down. I think he was going to use the He's disappeared. restroom. He has disappeared. Jason McCarthy first to play now. <laughs> Ned, we were just talking about tactics. What do you think? It Nature was, calls sometimes. It but. was interesting, though. He took a hard left as we made our way down. He's definitely... Perhaps gamesmanship, as you wow. said, some tactics up on the tee and ground here at 12th. His turn, but where that, where that restroom is located, it would have made complete sense to just go after your tee off on 13. As I said, sometimes you can't help when nature calls, but, you know, that was only an extra few minutes. Did you see that? On the green there, there were a couple words exchanged. We couldn't hear him, but I think Cole just caught him off guard a little bit. He clearly said, I think you're away. And he looked up as if to say, wait a minute. You're in the bunker. You're supposed to go first, pal. But it's not. Now, here's an interesting one, Ned. This would be one I'd be looking to get on the ground as quickly as possible. He's got the sand wedge. Wow, and he plays so quickly. I am a fan of that, mm. but I'm not a fan of that choice of shot. Yep. That was not the right shot selection, and, and there's a good example of one that you said, get on the ground fast. The smaller the action, the less that can go wrong. You can read it like a putt. Want to learn how to play a bunker shot, Ewan? Watch this. Big wide stance, low hand. the most important element of this, especially coming off a little bit of an upslope, accelerate. Oh, it sounded like there wasn't much sand. Did you hear it drop kick into the ball? You gotta wonder if Jason McCarthy had that really got that played on his mind then. What do you think? I'm just looking by his reaction, I, I just think he was digging in with his feet. And you can, in a way, understand what the sand is by the ball, and you could hear it almost click into the ball. I just don't think there was as much sand as he thought there was going to be on the upslope. Well, I'll tell you what, it certainly made for a little bit of drama, a little bit of excitement here. And a squirrely one left for par. You want a reminder, we've got about five more minutes left of our coverage before you can go watch on Fox Sports 1. They will pick up this match. The great champion, Buddy Marucci, will be calling the action from down on the ground, I believe, here for the Cole Hammer match. Speaking of Cole Hammer, he now has 18 feet down the hill right to left. It's not going to be too dissimilar to the chip that he faced on the last hole. It's going to be extremely quick one that's going to require a lot of finesse, something that he has in abundance. He's a snake charmer on the greens. That was Greg Chalmers' his nickname. Now that snake young man, in the same mold as Greg Chalmers, boy, could he hold a good putt. Regularly in the top ten of putting statistics on the PGA Tour won the Barracuda Championship about three years ago, two-time Australian Open winner. Tough putt to read because in the beginning of the first six or eight feet, it goes a skosh to the left, and then it goes a slickle to the right, and then at the end, it goes straight. This is a lag putt, Ned, but in this situation, are you thinking that? No. Right 
breaking putt for him the other way, meaning a left-hander, but this will be to get it back to one down. This could really be a huge turn of events if he can manage to hold his putt down. Just stay steady. Ben Routini flashes it out to the left, rolls it in, and he's only one back now as they make their way from the 12th past the restroom to the 13th tee. Left. We're going to watch the players hit their tee shots and then we'll be wrapping up our coverage. McCarthy, the friendly confines of the 12th and 13th. He has played those holes well this week. And they yield another hole one. And this is a fairly tricky tee shot here on 13. It's back into the breeze on this par four, but it's a relatively narrow shoot of trees that you've got to hit it between a, a note for the average golfer if you're standing on this tee and you perhaps pull it or push it a little bit you're going to clip one of those branches and what you can't feel here the breeze feels like it's straight into you but it's actually coming a little bit more off the ocean you just have to remind yourself of that the left bunker down Flanking on the fairway is a good place to be if you're going to miss where you don't want to be as well right. The rough, twisted, nasty, mean. Well, let's see if he flats this one down a little bit or he just goes ahead and makes a normal swing. Well, I can tell you that ball flight is straight up in the air but piercing through the wind and that is in perfect position. This hole is playing a mile long today. Need to bring out a frozen rope here for Cole Hammer. Shake off what just happened. Back on 12. Live your best golf swing right here. Going after that one, reaching back for an extra gear. Well, you can see he's hammered it down the left. Just sneaks and crawls over the bunker, but in perfect position now. Both players in the short grass, Ewan, as they make their way up to 13th. It has been a classy affair between these two players, birdies and pars. But a lot of golf left to play. As you turn back into the breeze, head your way up the 13th and to the 14th, eventually making your way to the clubhouse, which is where you and I will head now. We will hand over the coverage to Fox Sports 1, Paul Azinger, Brad Faxon, Shane Bacon, and the entire team. For Ned Michaels, Ewan Porter, Rob Rubina, and our entire crew, we will see you later this afternoon with some more live action. You can always go to USGA.org to check the scores. See you this afternoon. Then it's been great golf. Joshua McCarthy now with his second. That's a five iron as well from 169. What a shot there by McCarthy. No trouble getting over it. Go a little. How about this golf shot? Magic. 
Saw him do it yesterday. Brad came up clutch the last three holes and started right here. 